Welcome to the Food Bank of South Jersey's Summer Feeding Food Safety Training. This training will cover common types of food contamination and the conditions at which they most commonly occur, basic food handling principles, and your role in keeping food safe. Proper food safety and sanitation must be practiced to prevent program participants from sickness due to food poisoning. Illness caused by food is a serious problem that affects millions of people each year. The CDC estimates that one in six Americans get sick with food poisoning each year, leading to 128,000 hospitalizations and 3,000 deaths. Food can become contaminated by biological, physical, or chemical hazards. Biological hazards include viruses, bacteria, and parasites. Physical hazards include anything that can get into food and contaminate it, such as jewelry, bandages, or bugs. Chemical hazards include residual pesticides on unwashed fruits or vegetables and cleaning supplies. We will now discuss biological hazards in more depth. Biological hazards can easily contaminate food and cause serious illness. Microorganisms are often very persistent and can survive even when measures are taken to kill them. Under favorable conditions, they thrive. For example, bacteria can double their population every 10 to 30 minutes. Unfortunately, conditions favorable for food storage are also often favorable for microbial growth. For example, most bacteria thrive between 41 and 139 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature at which many foods are stored. Microorganisms can grow readily under certain conditions that can be summed up using the mnemonic device Fat Tom. First is food, referring to the nutrients the food product itself can provide to a microorganism. Protein rich foods, such as meat or milk, have a lot of nutrients that can nourish growing microorganisms. Next is acidity. Microorganisms thrive in conditions between 6.6 .6 and 7.5 pH. Accordingly, foods within this pH are particularly susceptible to microorganism growth. Next are time and temperature. Foodboard pathogens grow best in temperatures between 41 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. This range is referred to as the temperature danger zone. When food is left for too long within this range, it becomes susceptible to pathogen growth. Almost all microorganisms require oxygen and moisture to grow. Limiting the amount of oxygen and water food is exposed to can greatly reduce microorganism growth. The FDA regulates how much free water is allowable in certain products to prevent the growth of particular microorganisms. We will now go through the proper food safety procedures for meal service, from delivery to cleanup after a meal distribution. Checking food when you receive it will help make sure that it is safe. When food is delivered, inspect the overall condition of the product and look for any obvious signs of chemical, biological, or physical hazards. Also, upon delivery, be sure to count the number of meals to ensure that you have the correct amount. These six steps must be followed in order to properly wash one's hands. Ensure that warm water and soap are used and that you scrub for at least 20 seconds. It is important that food is served in a hygienic environment. Always wash hands before serving food and wipe down any surfaces that food may come into contact with. Any utensils or dishes should be stored upside down to protect them from contamination. As a food handler, you need to ensure that you wear clean clothing and shoes. Remove any jewelry from your hands or arms that could fall off and into the food. Keep fingernails trimmed and keep long hair tied back and or covered.
One way to reduce the risk of food contamination is through the use of gloves. Gloves must be removed when leaving the immediate cooking or serving area and should be changed any time you change tasks. Immediately replace gloves that become torn, soiled, or contaminated. Gloves are required for all lunch meal services. Since all food for breakfasts and snacks are prepackaged, gloves are only recommended for those meals. When helping small children open packages or cut up food, gloves must be worn. If handling food with nail polish or fake nails, gloves must also be worn. It is important that any wounds on your hands are covered properly. Cover the wound with a bandage that prevents fluid from leaking out. Then, place a single-use glove over the bandage. The bottom picture shows how to properly cover a hand wound for safe food handling. As a food handler, you must be aware of any personal behaviors that could contaminate food. These include wiping your face or hair, coughing or wearing dirty clothing. Be sure to wash your hands after doing any of these behaviors. Never eat, drink, chew gum, or smoke in food handling or food storage areas. When cleaning surfaces, use a food service disinfectant or a mixture of bleach and water. Again, all surfaces must be cleaned before serving or preparing any food. If you are at an outdoor site, use a tablecloth or placemats if possible. Paper towels are recommended for wiping surfaces rather than sponges or cloth towels that can harbor bacteria. All foods must be stored in a clean and secure location. Dry food should be kept off the ground to prevent rodents and insects from getting into it. Food storage areas should be kept locked and should only be accessible to authorized staff. Refrigerated food should be stored at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. When taking food out of the refrigerator for a meal, be sure that it is done as close to the meal service time as possible. If refrigerated food is out of cold storage for more than two hours, it is no longer safe for consumption and should be discarded. Any cold, ready-to-eat foods should be stored above raw meat, seafood, or poultry. This is done to ensure that juices from these items don't leak down and contaminate other foods. Food safety is especially important when dealing with people with food allergies. The proteins that cause allergic reactions are called allergens. The pictures across the bottom of the screen represent the most common food allergies. These foods include dairy, peanuts, fish, and wheat. Avoiding cross-contamination and labeling products are the most important ways to keep people with food allergies safe. Cross-contamination is when a food item containing an allergen comes in contact with another food item. Cross-contamination can be prevented by cleaning surfaces that have come in contact with allergens, inspecting food packaging to ensure that no leaks or spills have occurred, storing foods with allergens separate from those without, and changing gloves after handling food containing allergens. As a recap, this slide shows your primary responsibilities in keeping food safe. Practice good personal hygiene to ensure that pathogens aren't transferred from you to any food. This includes always properly washing one's hands, wearing clean clothing, and the proper use of gloves. 
Control the time and temperature of food. Don't let food stay too long at temperatures between 41 and 139 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature danger zone where pathogens grow best. Prevent cross-contamination. Don't transfer pathogens from one food to another or from one surface to another. Be aware of any children that have allergies and be sure to take special precautions to avoid cross-contaminating their food. Clean and sanitize surfaces correctly. Always wash down any surfaces that may come into contact with food. The following websites provide additional information about proper food handling and food safety. Foodsafety.gov provides up-to-date information on recent food recalls and alerts. If you have any further questions or concerns, please contact Amanda Conover, Direct Service Associate. Thank you for your participation in FBSJ's Summer Feeding Food Safety Training.